Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hi, dear students. This lecture is for the fourth year medical student. This is one of the nutritional diseases. We will talk about rickets, which is common in our society because we are one of the developing countries. So what's the definition of rickets? It is a metabolic bone disease develops as a result of an adequate mineralization of the matrix, growth plate, and the growing bone due to disruption of calcium, phosphorus, and or the vitamin D, and it occurs in children only before fusion of epiphysis. So it is disease of the developing bone, not of the mature or adult bone. And the difference in name, rickets in developing bone because here it occurs before, before the fusion of epiphysis, while in adult, we call it osteomalacia. What is the etiology? There are many causes of rickets, including the most important one is vitamin D deficient or disorder. Calcium deficiency, second one, phosphorus deficiencies a third, and fourth is a distal renal tubular acidosis as it affects the absorption of calcium and phosphorus through the tubule. Vitamin D deficiency, there are two causes. Here we will discuss this subject, either because of deficient intake or because of defective metabolism of vitamin D. Both of these causes will lead to decline in serum calcium, which triggers the secretion of the parathyroid hormone from the parathyroid gland, and it will act to normalize serum calcium. At the same time, there is demineralization of the bone because calcium will be supplied from the bone by bone resorption and at the same time it will cause a lot of renal loss of phosphate and subsequently the serum phosphate level will be low which further reducing potential for bone calcification the ratio between calcium and phosphate should be two to one this for optimal crystallization and ossification of the bone if there is defect in this ratio, whether in the calcium or in phosphate or both of them, it will end with defective crystallization and defective mineralization. The causes of rickets, either it is a nutritional, which is the primary one, and there are a lot of risk factors, including living in northern altitude, because of usually high altitude, um, it, uh, it carries or hold cold water, and there is decreased exposure to sun and second is dark skin because here it contains a lot of melanin pigment and it is a barrier between the ultraviolet light and the sun and the skin decreased exposure to sunlight here we mean the exposure as a whole and the duration of exposure usually you should expose your baby for between half to one hour daily Maternal vitamin D deficiency because of diseases or decrease in the intake and diet low in calcium, phosphorus and vitamin D to the baby. For example, exclusive breastfeeding into late infancy which is between one and two years of life or toddler dose of three to four years of age on unsupervised dairy free diet which means milk free or milk product free diet. A problem character parental nutrition in infancy. Some babies need IV line nutrition. This is the parental nutrition. And it involved vitamins, lipids in form of intralipid and vi and vamine. And sometimes this will cause an adequate supply of calcium and phosphate. Second causes of rickets due to vitamin D deficiency is the intestinal obstruction as in a small bowel enteropathy, celiac disease and inflammatory bowel diseases or due to pancreatic disease like pancreatic insufficiency as in cystic fibrosis or due to liver cholestatic liver disease usually it is due to obstructive type of jaundice and there is biliary tract disease and or to the high phytic acid in the diet these are related to the intestinal malabsorption number three and four related to defect in the liver function and it will affect the production of 25 hydroxy vitamin D2 either because of defective production of vitamin D2 due to chronic liver disease or there is increased metabolism of 25 hydroxy vitamin D so 
Sometimes patients take medication as anticonvulsant and they are enzyme inducer, for example, phenobarbitone. This enzyme inducer will act to accelerate degeneration, degradation of the biologically active vitamin D metabolized. So vitamin D will decrease. Fifth, if there is effective in the production of 125 dihydroxy vitamin D, this appear in the kidney. There are underlying four causes. Either it is due to hereditary diseases, type one, vitamin D resistant rickets. There is mutation, which abolish activity of the renal hydroxylase enzyme. So the hydroxylase enzyme here is effective, and this will end with vitamin D resistant rickets. Or it is due to familial X-linked hypophosphatemic rickets where there is a renal tubular defect in the phosphate transport. Usually here, the male is affected because it is X-linked and the female is carrier. Or because of chronic renal diseases or Fanconi syndrome in which there is a renal loss, loss of phosphate. Six is target organ resistance to 125-dihydroxy vitamin D as an hereditary vitamin D dependent rickets type 2 due to mutation in the vitamin D receptor gene. And this diagram is presented here. The vitamin D where it is in the liver will be changed to 25 hydroxy vitamin D and then by hydroxylation in the kidney to form to the 125 dihydroxy vitamin D. This is the active form. So the, either there is defect in the hydroxylation in the liver or defect of hydroxylation in the kidney and here we have different type of vitamin D vitamin D dependent rickets type 1 due to defect in the hydroxylase enzyme and vitamin D dependent rickets type 2 due to end organ resistance so what's the presentation either there is a clinical rickets in form of bony changes which is the common or, or there is symptoms of hypocalcemia only and this presentation of hypocalcemia usually occur before two years of age and in adolescence and here because they occur at this time they have rickets because their calcium is less than the demand because the bone here is a growing bone and it goes hypocalcemia even before rickets develop the bony changes develop so in general there is failure to thrive, listlessness, protruding abdomen, muscle weakness, especially the proximal muscles, fracture, and hypotonia. In the head, there is a craniotabis, which means softening of the bone, as in this picture, and feeling of ping pong sensation, usually on the occipital and parietal bone. There is a frontal posing, and box like head, dental caries, and delayed dentition. There is delayed fontanel closure and the craniosynostosis which is early closure of the suture line in chest finding there is rachitic rosary here this is the rachitic rosary and the, the rachitic rosary is a row of a bead line prominence at the junction of the ribs and it is cartilage means there is enlarged costochondylar junction resemble rosary there is pigeon chest narrow chest Harrison groove as this photo here and there is repeated chest infection and collapse or atelectasis in the back there is scoliosis lateral curve of the spine kyphosis and there is lordosis these are common late manifestation in the extremities there is enlargement of the wrist and ankle as this picture and that one and vulgus virus deformity wind swept deformity combination of vulgus deformity of the leg and virus deformity of other leg. There is anterior bowing of the tibia and femur with coxa vara and leg pain. This is the genobulgum and genobarum. Genobulgum, there is approximation of the knee joint and we call it lock knee. While here is genobarum, there is a wide displacement between the two knee joint and this is called causing bolex geno vulgum and geno vara. what about coxa vulga vara sorry coxa vara is a complex of a three-dimensional deformity and include varus and retroversion of the proximal femur normal neck shaft ankle is 
120 to 140 degree this is the normal between 120 and 40 degree if it is less than 120 we call it coxavara this is one of the deformities occur in rickets at birth usually the angle is 160 and decreasing up to reach until it reach 125 degree in adult so usually they got here coxavara deformity associated with a knock knee deformity the end of the long bone demonstrate that same knobby thickening there is some the same thickening here like th this one at the ankle palpation of the tibial malleolus give impression of the double epiphysis we call the marfan sign so what is marfan sign it is double malleolus and rickets because the softening of the bone it is very soft and likely to be bent and this may cause a fracture on one side of the cortex we call it a green stick fracture this is the green stick fracture there is a fracture at one side and this is by radiological finding if the patient have symptoms just of hypoglycemia sorry hypoglycemia they usually get convulsion arrhythmia tetany strider and apnea and as we said it is common before two years of age and the strider here is one of the important manifestation you should never forget and you have to check for the calcium level if your if your patient came with a strider and this is abbreviation we called cats cat indicate convulsion la indicate arrhythmia and t tetany strider and the spam which is the s so the diagnosis made from first of all later history of vitamin d and calcium and phosphorus intake type of food and the amount and we have to do this special test for serum calcium, phosphorus, alkaline phosphatase, vitamin D and the active of 25 hydroxy vitamin D and the P parathyroid hormone. So the calcium either it is low or normal, low in the beginning, but after a stimulation of the parathyroid hormone it will be high, return to normal. Phosphorus remain low even after after the stimulation of parathyroid hormone. Alkaline phosphatase it is a great D increase and the vitamin D level may be low and the parathyroid hormone is increased. So radiological finding a rickets. There is cupping and the frying of the metaphysis. Cup shape with the frying. This is the metaphysis. And there is poor mineralization of the epiphyseal center and delayed appearance. There is irregular widening epithelial plate. This is the epithelial plate and it is irregular. And it is wide and there is an increased distance between this is the distance here between the end of the shaft and the epiphyseal center cortical spur this is the spur it have a right angle with the metaphysis and there is coarse trabeculation not a ground glass appearance like in scurvy periosteal thickening thickening this is the periosteal thickening and deformity associated with rickets may be bowing of the long bones molding of epiphysis and the fracture may be found if the records is healed these are the, uh, the most non radiological changes occur within two to three weeks after treatment successful treatment the most important thing here is this line line of provisional or preparatory line of calcification at the end of the metaphysis then the osteoid will continue to form in between this area between the line and the diaphysis and which gradually ossified this is another x-ray here is the cupping and the frying and then it start to have a, this preparatory line of calcification and then there is bending of ossified tissue and then end with this picture which goes with healed rickets so how we manage management nutritional rickets is managed by first of all advice about balanced diet calcium and phosphorus and then correction of the predisposing risk factor and third daily administration of vitamin d holy calciferol doses range from 2000 to 5000 international unit per day over four to six weeks if compliance is an issue which means poor compliance we may use a single dose oral dose of vitamin d3 this call stores therapy three hundred thousand to 600,000 international unit of vitamin D administered orally or intramuscularly never intravenous decrease not to give intravenous vitamin D 
because it is fatal and here when we give this therapy with oral administration of active form of vitamin D we may give over one day but in two to four doses and either strategy which means other oral daily administration or simple dose dose orally we have to follow by daily vitamin D intake of 400 international units per day if the child less than one year of age or 600 international units per day if more than one year old healing occur within two to four weeks and can be monitored from the lowering of alkaline phosphatase increasing vitamin d and healing on x-ray but complete reversal of bony deformity takes even years and sometimes needs supplements and surgery like in this patient so in severe cases or if untreated long nutritional rickets can increase the risk of there is bone fracture as a complication prominent bone deformity heart problems as in heart failure seizures recurrent pneumonia obstructed labor and lifelong disability sometimes we treat with a hypervitaminosis a lot of this oral medication oral injection oral medication or intramuscular injection this might cause hypercalcemia which might cause emesis anorexia pancreatitis hypertension arrhythmia cns effect polyuria nephrolithiasis renal failure and bone pain and as you remember the hypercalcemia will cause bones affected the bone there is remodeling and the fracture stones in the kidney crones there is abdominal pain or cramps alias constipation and psychiatric bones as we said before in the pathology lecture so this table is a summary of the clinical feature and records thank you very much